Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. I'll start by saying we probably all know people either at work or in our personal lives who are really good listeners. No matter what kind of situation we are in, they always seem to know just what to say and how to say it. They are caring and considerate. People like this have a high degree of emotional intelligence. As more and more people accept that emotional intelligence is just as important to professional success as technical ability, organizations are increasingly using it when they hire and when they promote. I'd like us to unmute our mics and tell us what you think emotional intelligence is and why do you think it is important? Is this on mute and mics? What do you think emotional intelligence is and why do you think it is important? It's important for leadership. All right, thank you, Clarice. Any other person? Important for way of life. All right, thank you, Adiwali. Okay, so emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize your emotions, understand why they are, what they are telling you, and realize how your emotions affect the people around you. It also involves your perception of others when you understand how they feel. It allows you to manage relationships more effectively. People with high emotional intelligence are usually successful in most things they do. You'd ask me why? Because they are the ones others want on their team. They make others feel good. They go through life much more easier than people who are easily angered, triggered, or upset. Talking about attributes of emotional intelligence. In his book titled Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ, Daniel Goleman, an American psychologist, developed a framework of five elements that define emotional intelligence. People with high emotional intelligence are usually very self-aware. They understand their emotions and because of this, they do not let their feelings rule them. They are so willing to take an honest look at themselves. They know their strengths and weaknesses and they work on these areas so they can perform better. Many people believe this self-awareness is the most important part of emotional intelligence. The ability to control emotions and impulses. People who self-regulate typically don't allow themselves to become too angry or jealous, and they don't make impulsive or careless decisions. They think before they act. They are thoughtful. They have integrity, which is also one of our core values. People with a high degree of emotional intelligence are usually motivated. They are willing to defer immediate results for long-term success. They are highly productive. They love challenges and are very, they are very effective in whatever it is they do. Empathy is perhaps the second most important element of emotional intelligence. Empathy is the ability to identify and understand the wants, needs and viewpoints of those around you. People with empathy are good at recognizing the feelings of others, even when those feelings may not be obvious. It is usually easy to talk to and to like people with good social skills. That is another eye, another sign of high emotional intelligence. Those with strong social skills are typically team players. Rather than focus on their own success, they help develop others. They help others develop and shine, as they are probably determined. Emotional intelligence can be a key to success in your life and especially in your career. The ability to manage people and relationships is very important in all leaders. So developing and using your emotional intelligence can be a good way to show others the leader inside of you. Well, the good news is that emotional, emotional intelligence can be learned and developed, as well as working on the skills in the five areas Elliot mentioned. You can also use these strategies. Do you rush to judgments before you know all the facts? Do you stereotype? Look honestly at how you think and interact with other people. Try to put yourself in their place. Be more open in accepting of other people's perspective and their needs. 
do a self-evaluation. What are your weaknesses? Are you willing to accept that you are not perfect and that you could work on some areas to make yourself a better person? Have the courage today to look at yourself honestly. Trust me, it can change your life. Do you become upset every time there's a delay or something doesn't happen the way you want? Do you blame others or become angry at them even when it is not their fault? The ability to stay calm and in control in difficult situations is highly valued in the business world and even outside of it. Keep your emotions under control. If you hurt someone's, someone's feelings, apologize directly. Don't ignore what you did or avoid the person. People are usually more willing to forgive and forget if you make an honest attempt to make things right. Examine how your actions affect others. Before you take those actions, examine how the actions will affect other people. If your decision will impact others, put yourself in their place. How will they feel if you do this? Would you want that experience for yourself? If you must take the action, how can you help others deal with the effect? I'll be leaving us with this quote from Joseph for Newton, who says, we cannot tell what may happen to us in this strange medley of life, but we can decide what happens in us, how we can take it, what we do with it, and that is what really counts in the end. Thank you all for listening.